Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. Now, this quick tip video is actually going to be more useful than just for PowerShell, but I'm going to be showing with PowerShell examples. But this video is actually going to be giving you guys a free, reliable API to be able to test that is completely for free. You don't even have to sign up for an account either. I've always been kind of hesitant to make a video offering a free API. Uh, for you guys to use and play around with because a lot of them require signing up for an account and getting a bunch of tokens. This one is completely free and we can go ahead and we can actually try it out today with PowerShell. Show you guys a couple examples even though we have a few videos already on the channel on how to use the invoke rest method commandlet. But I just want to show how easy that this JSON placeholder is to be able to be used in your code. Um, it also has a large amount of data in it that is queryable. As example, um, you can query users and a bunch of different things like that. So let's go ahead and let's just take a quick look at the website here. Uh, so we can actually see that it has resources like posts, comments, albums, photos, to do, and users. The users one is the one that we're going to be playing around with today and a little bit of the posts. Uh, but what's really nice is you can actually use this user data to populate your test active directory or anything like that, your test environment. This is a really, really great fake data to use. Uh, there's also this guide up here that you can click on. Um, the guide will show you how to use their API routes and kind of the data that they're expecting. Uh, one thing to note is that this code is going to be um, all using the fetch API, which I believe is uh, JavaScript. Um, so they don't have any other languages that they show here. So that's why I'm doing the example with PowerShell. Um, and one other thing to note is if you do any of the creating of a resource or updating resource, um, the actual server itself is not updated. It just pretends like it works and sends you that feedback. But what's really good is if you don't have any work experience with APIs. This is a great way to practice and learn using APIs, especially learning APIs with PowerShell. So let's go ahead. Let's get started here. Let's go into our Visual Studio code window um, and let's get started here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to quickly practice how to get our users back from this API. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a variable called URI. And we're just going to make this URI equal HTTPS colon backslash backslash JSON placeholder dot TP code. I think that's how you pronounce it dot com slash users. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to store our response in our response variable. And we're going to make that equal to invoke rest method. Now you can do invoke um, web request. Uh, the only thing is there is going to be some extra work when you use the invoke web request, especially if you're querying APIs. I always just rather do the invoke rest method. And then we're going to make sure that we use the method get because this is just good practice. By default, it is get. Um, but I just like to get in the habit of always specifying the method. If someone else comes and reads your code they will know exactly what you're trying to do. We're going to put our URI. We can just reference our variable here. And then the content type um, for this, we are going to use application slash JSON. Now, even this, let's actually go ahead. Let's cut this out and um, let's do a content type a variable because we're going to have to repeat this a few times. Do content type right there. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to look at what our response is right after. So if we highlight all of this and run that really quickly, and let's go ahead and let's just open this up. We're going to see all of our users actually come back. So we can see our first user here is Leanne Graham. Uh, username is Brett. Uh, email is sincere. So you can see that all this data is definitely very, very mashed together. There is definitely no rhyme or reason for a lot of it, uh, but that is good for test data. Uh, so what you can even do is you can take your response and practice your PowerShell even more and do a select ID name 
username and email. And let's go ahead and let's run that here. And there we're going to get our list of users by name, username and email and the ID that they match with. So that is perfect. Very, very easy to practice your gets with that API route. Now, another one is going to be, you can practice updating with these routes. Now, as I said, the actual data will not be updated on the server. So any updates that you do, um, and then you try to get it afterward, you will not see your updates. Um, so just, that is just one thing to keep in mind. And the URI that we're going to put here is going to be HTTPS colon backslash backslash. Actually, I'm just going to copy paste this URI here. We're just going to paste it in here. And we want to update the user at ID one. So we have to specify the ID. Now, of course, you can do this all through code. Um, if you fetch it and you know exactly which one you need to update, you can definitely automate this very, very nicely. This is just to show you guys what you can actually do with this free API route. Um, so we're going to create our body here. We're going to put our body as ID equals one and name. We are just going to put that as test update here. And of course you can add a lot of other properties. We already know that we have a lot of properties in user that we're going to be able to update. And then once we have our body, what I like to do is just make our body equals body convert to JSON. Now, of course, you can write your body variable as a JSON object right away. I find that sometimes a little bit tricky, especially if you're not used to writing JSON. So I like having PowerShell handle that for me. And then uh, very similarly, uh, this time we're not going to store it in our response variable, but we're just going to do our invoke rest method. We're going to do a method and for an update is put. Now, if you guys want to know where I'm actually getting these um, URIs from and what method to use that is all in the guide. Um, so if you guys go to this website and I'm going to post the link to the website in the description that will give you all of them. I am just giving you guys a very nice little overview of how you can actually use this site and get a lot of practice in. And I have videos that go a little bit more in depth on the invoke rest method on my channel as well that you can use, um, to practice even more. Uh, so we're going to pass in our URI, we're going to pass in our body, and then we're again, we're going to have to pass in our content type here. And if we actually run these lines here, let's just expand our re response so we can actually see our response it gave us back our test update and our ID. So the update actually happened successfully. And we know that it happened successfully because if we go back to our, our guide here, we're going to see, and the guide shows for posts. So I'm just showing you guys how to do it for users. Um, the method, we can see that it's put, they create their body and then they have their headers and their content type. So all we need is the content type. And then once they send that over, all they get back is exactly what they kind of updated. Um, so we know that the update actually worked correctly, as long as your output looks very similar to what they have. And you can even, as your practice, use the exact same routes that they have on their guide, and then maybe explore that out with the users, comments, and albums afterwards. Um, it just makes for very, very good practice. Then the other thing that this API actually lets you do, it lets you practice deletes. I'm not going to cover the deletes because there is no response for that. Um, so it's a little bit hard to kind of practice, but it does allow you to do query string filtering, which is very, very handy, especially if you're planning on learning Microsoft Graph. Um, query string filtering is quite used in Microsoft Graph. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is we're just going to copy paste this URI again, just to save us a little bit of typing, but instead of users, what we're going to do is we're going to do posts and then we're going to do a question mark, which designates the beginning of our query string. And we want to find all the posts that are equal to the user ID. And you're going to see that this is actually an example that they have, and I'm going to change the example. Uh, to show you guys, but I want to use the example that's actually on the site first. 
before we go any further. And then we're going to have our response variable again, because we're actually getting information here. We're going to do an invoke rest method. We're going to do a method of get here, our URI. We're going to put in our URI and then our content type. Once again, we're going to put in our content type. And what this is going to do, this is actually going to show us. Uh, oh, we need to actually see what's in the response here real quick. It would help if I spell it properly. So there's all the posts created by user ID one. And what we can do here is if we changed our user ID to two, we can easily see Um, hold on, let me just get the response here. There's all the posts that are made by user ID two. So all these things are very, very good. And what you would do is change posts to users and then just change ID to two here. And this should actually work and then check our response. And then if we go look at our response, So the response here, because the query is not actually designed to actually take that, and I'm going to show you guys why, where you're going to actually see that. Um, so one level of nested, so the filtering routes here. Um, so basic filtering is supported through query parameters. This will return all the posts that belong to the first user. And there we have post and user ID. Um, and I believe that the only one that you can do filtering on is actually the posts. I'm not a hundred percent positive um, on that because there is no actual other information. Um, but that is just something to keep in mind is when you do see, especially with the guide, everything is done with the posts. Um, you can more than likely um, get with the query strings. Um, but even here, you can see the different routes here. So here we can actually see that we have um, get post, get post one, which it will get all the posts. We'll get the first post. Uh, so you can get post first and then the comments on the first post. Um, and then you can get on the comments and then have a query string on the post ID one. Um, so those are all different things that you can actually look at there. And then I believe that that is really it. And you can even, uh, they give you some uh, GitHub that if you ever wanted to bring up your own REST server, you can easily do that as well. But, and if you ever wanted to see what is in the users here, you could easily look at this here. And then if you did, um, we can even try it here if we did, um, Username is equal to on ton net here. You can see that it comes up blank. But if we do posts and then actually, yeah, so users, uh, if we did posts here and then we do user ID is equal to two. Our ID is equal to two. Give me one second here. Oops. It just went to a Bing search. Let me actually just copy this over. So if we change this user ID to two here, you're going to see that we actually get all of them here in the browser. So in the browser, that does not actually really work that well. Uh, so that is just something to keep in mind. Um, if you're trying it through the browser instead of PowerShell um, or any other languages that you're trying this, it might be a little off here. So if we go posts once again, and then we go user ID equals two, and then we do our response. Right. 
Enter ID equals two posts. That should be good here. Just make sure that everything is typed out correctly. All right, so it does seem to be case sensitive. And I want to say that in the browser, because I just did this here, it automatically lower cases everything after the query string. So it does seem to be case sensitive. So if you guys are using this, um, I hadn't run into this issue just until this video, which is great that I ran into it. So if you do only a user ID all lowercase, it will not actually work. Um, so even if we did users here and ID equals two, let me just do a response here. And we're going to be able to test it out to see if it is truly just a lowercase or uppercase here. Um, so here it actually does come back with just the ID of two. But when we had the ID with capital I, we can actually see that we were getting all the users back because the key is actually ID all lowercase. So that is something to pay attention to. Make sure that with a query string, it is case sensitive. So just be aware of that when you guys are testing it out. That's the reason for these videos and showing you guys that it does actually matter because I don't think on the guide, I don't think that it actually specifies it. Um, especially on the filtering. Um, so it does show user ID. And since this is a resource to learn, it could be a little bit tricky if you guys have never used API routes in the past with um, query string filtering. So that is something to keep in mind. But that is it for this quick tip video. Again, that URL for the JSON placeholder will be in the description down below. If you guys have anything that you guys would like me to show as a quick tip, maybe another free resource, a sandbox that you guys use to practice, please let me know. And I can share that out to our community. Or if you guys have a commandlet that you guys would like me to look at, please let me know as well. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.